Okay, so we're looking at locks and switches today. Uh, the way this works is uh, the blue locks, once you flip the switch, the blue locks go away forever. The yellow locks, they go away for a little while, they come back. And then the red locks come right back if you step off the switch. So one koala has to be on the red switch for the red lock to go away so that the other koala can get out where it, where, wherever it's trapped. So I'm just going to quickly go through the sprites here. And I'm going to pause the recording. Uh, when I come back, though, I'll have all the sprites built. Okay, so I've done the red lock, but uh, let me show you the, the blue lock. There it is. So we're going to remove the background. Uh, we're going to shut off precise collision checking. We'll say full image rectangle. And next we have to do the switches as well. I'll do the first one and then skip the rest. Again, we'll make those same changes. Uh, next, we'll create objects for each one of these sprites. Now, the red locks are all the locks, really. Uh, you know, we want to check, we want to choose the, the lock image, but we also want to make sure that it has a parent of wall. That way, locks will behave just like walls when it comes to collisions with the koala the koala colliding into that. Also make them solid, and then that should help. So the switches are not solid, and they're not derived from parent. Uh, uh, they don't have a parent object. They're just there, and they'll flip back and forth when you touch them. But we'll go over that in a second. OK, so we're going to go into our uh, blue switch and add some things to that. Um, first of all, we want to add in the create event we don't want the, the switch to frantically switch back and forth. That gets a little bit annoying. So in the create event, then, I would change the sprite to, this is the blue switch. We'll just do that one. Sub image is 0, and then the animation speed, that's what speed means, set that to 0 as well. That will make it so it doesn't keep flipping back and forth. Uh, we also have to add a collision event with Koala. And what that's going to do is it's just delete all the, the blue locks out of the game. So we would say delete. And this, this time we're not deleting the lock, nor, or we're not deleting the switch, certainly, but we are deleting all the locks in the game. So the way you do that is you say Object. If you say other, that'll delete the koala. It's not, not what you want. And just choose all the blue locks. So every blue lock in the game will be destroyed once they hit the blue switch. We also have to manage the graphic a little bit on the switch. Once that occurs, we want to switch the sprite. Same thing, we want to do the blue switch, but we want to flip it the other way. So we're going to set the speed to zero again, but this time the sub image is going to be one. And it'll look like the toggle switch has been toggled. So in our test room, we're going to put in a, a lock and a switch. So we find the blue switch. Say it's down here. And then we'll put a few blue locks in different places. Um, suppose we surround our koala with locks. We're going to actually need another koala as well. So maybe we put a koala down here. OK, so here's our game. Uh, the one koala can't move because he's surrounded by locks. But as soon as we hit the switch, all the blue locks go away. OK, so the order in the books is a little bit uh, confusing. So I, the first thing I want to do is do the collision between the koala and the yellow lock. So I'm going to put a yellow lock in the room. 
or yellow switch, I mean. Here's the yellow lock. We'll add a yellow switch. Say here, we have uh, another koala that's trapped behind the yellow lock. It needs to be let out. We're going to move this one there. And so what should happen when the koala hits the yellow lock? Well, instead of destroying all the, or yellow switch, instead of uh, destroying all the yellow locks permanently, we're just going to move them outside the room for a little while. And so if we go into the collision event then with the switch, we'll add that collision between the koala and the switch. What we want to do is, we're going to say jump to position. And basically we're just moving it outside the room. So I, I'm saying like a thousand for X, we'll leave Y at zero. So we're just getting it out of the way. Uh, but are we really, are we wanting to move the switch out of the room? And the answer is no, we want to move all the locks out of the room. So go to the object and choose the yellow locks this time. We also want to set an alarm on the on the locks themselves so that they'll come back after a certain amount of time. So I'm thinking maybe five seconds. So we're going to set, set an alarm. So we say, here it is, set alarm. What do we want to set the alarm on? And the answer is the yellow locks. The number of steps, maybe 100. 150, which is five seconds, 30, 30 steps per second. We'll use alarm zero. Well, this kind of implies then that the alarm's going to go off, but this time on the yellow lock. <coughs> Excuse me. So now we go to the yellow lock, and we have to add an alarm event. Uh, now what happens here is we want to bring the yellow locks back, but we have to check to see if there's anything in the way first. So we go to the control tab, we do check empty, here we'll say all, and here we'll say x start and y start. This was, was the starting position of uh, the lock to begin with, the yellow lock. We'll say relative. Well, is it relative? No. It's an absolute position. Here we can say move to start. Jump to start, so it'll, it'll make it come back. Otherwise, we have to wait a little bit. So what we're going to do is just reset the alarm again there was something in the way and we're going to check every every two frames to see if that place opens up again so again we'll do a set alarm i'm going to say two alarm zero okay i think that's all we need there so if there's nothing in the way then you can jump back or if not, we're going to wait for two frames and we'll try again. And this alarm will just keep going off. Next, we do the, uh, we go to the yellow switch then. Here in this, we want to kind of make it like the blue switch. First of all, we want to um, check to see if the collision, to th the collision for the koala. So we're looking at the blue switch. Yeah, there's the blue switch. In the create event, we change the sprite, so we'll need to do the same thing here, here in the yellow one. Yellow switch. So we're at a create event here. And we'll change the sprite. We'll keep the sprite the same, but we're just going to flip it. So yellow switch, sub image of one, speed of zero. Comparing it to the, the blue switch, here's the collision with the koala. So we need to change uh, our sprite here as well. And so here at the bottom, we'll, we'll do a change sprite. And since the yellow locks come back, we, we want to 
also update all the switches. So this time we want to change sprite on the switches, not the locks. Which sprite do we want to change to? That same sprite, but we want to set the sub image to zero and the speed to zero. And that'll switch it back. All right, so looking at the, the yellow switch, the hope is when I step over the yellow switch with the koala, the other koala will be able to get out. And it looks like it did. Now we wait to see if the switch comes back. And it does. And the switch got flipped back again. Okay. Now this time, what I want to see is if, this, if the lock will overwrite the, the koala. Okay, so here I go. I go across the switch. It's fine. Walk one more time. And what I'm trying to see is after five seconds, the, the both switches come back. And we see that only one comes back, not the other. It's because the, the koala is in the way. As soon as I move the koala out of the way, the switch or the lock comes back. So that's the be behavior we're trying to see. Okay. I hit the blue switch. Blue switches never come back. Yellow ones do. Now, notice in running my game that uh, there's one mistake with my koala. I forgot to set the koala's parent to wall. So that if you don't do this, the koalas tend to merge together. It's kind of odd setting the koala to a wall, but we want the koala not to be able to crash into walls. And, and we also don't want the koalas to crash into to, to other koalas. So just for convenience, we're going to set the parent for the koala to a wall. Now the red switch and the red lock are just like the yellow ones, except the, the amount of time we wait before the lock comes back is much different. So I'm just going to uh, steal code from the yellow lock in the alarm event. I'm just going to grab all this. And I'm going to put it in the red lock in its own alarm event. Alarm zero. And here we just change a few things. First, we want to see if where the red lock started is free. Then we jump back to our starting position. But if it's not free, then we set the alarm for two. And we change the sprite not to the yellow switch. This time it would be the, the red switch. And this, again, is the red switch. Is that true? Yeah, I think it's right. Sub image zero, speed is zero. So that's what we do in the alarm event. And then in the in the red switch itself, we'll take a look at the yellow switch. Oh, that's the lock. Here's the yellow switch. We want to change the sprite in the create event, and then we want to jump back. We go to the red switch, add a create, create event, and here we're just shutting off the animation so it doesn't flip back and forth. So we grab that. And we'll do our switch. And we'll set the speed to zero. That'll shut that off. And then we'll add a collision event with the koala. And in here, we jump off the screen in the the yellow one, we're doing it for five seconds. This one, we'll just do uh, for two frames. So it's really short. Jump to position and then set alarm. So we go there. So jump to position. And again, we're just getting it off the screen. So we'll leave X, or we'll set X to 1,000. That'll be way off the screen. And we'll set Y to zero. It's not relative. And then, um, then we'll set the alarm. Set alarm zero. What do we want to set it on? We want to set it on the locks, actually. So here's the red lock. Number of steps, we're going to say two. And what that means is one koala has to be pretty much standing on the lock for the other koala to be able to get out. So let's add that to our room. OK, so here's the red lock. If we put in a red switch, Here's the red switch. Uh, actually, I want to do it one, one more away. 
And so I'll go to the left with the one uh, koala, and then we'll uh, maybe put another lock here too. I just want to demonstrate how this works. Okay, here I go, going to the left. The koala hits the first, hits the switch. The red locks did not go away. I deleted the wrong thing. Hmm. My switch went away. Yeah, here I said self. And what I needed to say was all the red locks. So that's this one. Let's try it again. Uh, so here I go. Now I, I step on the red switch. The lock goes away. If I move off the red switch, I still can't get out with my other one. Because the locks come back instantly. As soon as I step off the, the red switch, um, the koala still gets trapped. If you watch carefully, you see the koala kind of walked underneath the red switch and we want to do it over the top. So we want to make sure on our switches that we uh, set the depth on those to 10 because we want them to be drawn uh, before the koala is drawn. So if you could go into all of your switches and set the depth to 10, that, was a, that would be a good idea. So that controls the order of when things are drawn. That. And that. And that should solve that problem. Okay, so that's locks and switches. Again, they're a little bit challenging because there's a lot of objects flying around. You have locks being moved off the board. You have switches. You have koalas. You have alarms. But if you follow along with this video, you should have a pretty easy time of getting these set up.